and I'm an AP Biology teacher here at our Success Academy High School in Brooklyn. So today, we're actually going to test a little theory. Have you ever woke up in the morning and saw that it was so foggy outside or ever just happened to wonder how clouds form? Well, today, we're actually going to test that theory. This is an experiment that you can do in the classroom or even at home. The equipment that I have here with us is a can of hairspray, a graduated cylinder filled with ice, a beaker filled with blue water, and the blue water actually comes from food coloring, and a mason jar, and a lid to that mason jar. So first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take our blue hot water, and we're going to pour it right into the mason jar. And I have a glove on just in case it's a little too hot. Then after we pour the water in the mason jar, we're going to take the can of hairspray, and we're going to spray it right inside. As soon as we spray the hairspray, you're going to put that top right on, followed with a few ice cubes right on top of it. So similar to what happens outside, the heat evaporates from the ground and slowly rises into the sky. As those water particles are evaporating into the sky, they start to form clumps, creating a cloud. And as you can see here, from the water of the mason jar, it's slowly starting to rise up and it's starting to form that cloud that we want. In a few seconds, we're gonna open up this top to see what type of cloud it forms. You'll start to see that cloud form. And then eventually when we take off the lid, we'll be able to see how the cloud evaporates into the air. So now the exciting part, it is time to take the top off and see our cloud. So I'm gonna slowly take off the top. And as you can see, we have a cloud everyone. Hopefully you have as much fun as I did with this experiment. And feel free to change up the color, maybe pink, maybe green. What a great experiment. That would definitely help answer my kids' questions that they often ask when we're outside on a cloudy or rainy day. Thanks, Ms. Clegg. We're here today to show you that STEM is really just a way of thinking and that we can encourage it anytime, anywhere. Welcome to STEM Anywhere, brought to you by Success Academy's Robertson Center, where we share free resources with individuals like you who are interested in learning more about education. We want you to walk away from today with ways in which you can bring mathematical and scientific thinking into your regular conversations with your children. Let's see an example of what I'm talking about. Hi, my name's Lizzie and I write kindergarten and first grade science content here at Success. Today, I'm going to be baking some Funfetti cupcakes. Baking is a really great opportunity to spark wonder related to STEM, and there are a lot of applicable topics that scholars at Success will be learning about in K-4. As I make my cupcakes, I'm going to be using standard measuring cups, and I might ask my baking helper about what they notice about the units of my measuring cups and the different sizes of measuring cups in relation to one another. What might happen if we don't use measuring cups or measure out our ingredients? I'm also going to ask my scholar about the origin of my ingredients. Students in kindergarten and first grade are just beginning to learn about where food comes from, and asking about where my eggs come from might spark a very interesting conversation. As scholars move into second grade, they are going to be learning more about states of matter, and observations about the different liquids used in cooking could prompt questions about how the qualities of the ingredients affect my cake's taste, texture, or even smell. In third grade, scholars are beginning to understand physical and chemical changes. As I mix my ingredients, what do I notice? What is changing in the texture, maybe? Maybe the smell is changing, the color might be changing. After I put my cupcakes in the oven and they bake, I'm going to be thinking about how they've changed. How might the heat have caused them to change? What do we notice about these changes? Do we think that this cake is a completely different substance than our batter? Some clues that I might look for are color change and shape change. Finally, it's time to eat our cupcakes. This is also a great opportunity to discuss with your scholar questions about where waste goes, how we might treat our eggshells differently than our recyclable materials. What I love about these questions is that they're general enough that they could apply to any situation that sparks curiosity. To show you how easy it is, let's try it out. We want you to use the chat feature to share what you would do or say in these situations to encourage scientific or mathematical thinking. Let's go.
So as we can see, STEM is all around us. You can use these questions while you're walking down the street or you're doing experiments at home. There's no pressure to ask the right question or know the right answer. Just have fun with it. Hi, my name is Caroline and I am a science educator right here at Success Academies. Bridges play an important part in our daily lives as they are essential components of cities, especially in a city like New York City. Some bridges are simple and straightforward, like a log over a creek or bridges over streams, but others are amazingly complex, like the Brooklyn Bridge or the Golden Gate Bridge in California. It is not easy to create a bridge the size of the Brooklyn Bridge. Have you ever wondered how engineers actually go about designing an entire bridge? Bridges are often designed one piece at a time, and each component must meet certain criteria for the success of the whole bridge. So let's try this out at home. Test your skills at being a structural engineer. Using 200 popsicle sticks and some glue, see if you can hold five pounds of load on your bridge. If you don't have five pounds, you can test it out with a bag of sugar, flour, or even a bag of dog food. If your test fails, it's okay. Design another one and test it again. Have fun and good luck. I had my kids give it a try. Let's see how it goes. Excuse me, Otter's shirt. <laughs>